Welcome! Welcome to Mirror Domains Movie News, your place for entertainment headlines. And indeed, this is a live news show for movie fans, where we talk about all the trending movie news headlines of the day, including Joker 2 images, Equalizer 3 plot synopsis, Paddington 3, is it going to happen? Paddington in Peru. We take a look at what's opening up this weekend, and we take a look at the weekend's box office report, but we're going to start off today's show by talking about Secret Invasion. That Secret Invasion trailer dropped yesterday, guys. Samuel L. Jackson faces off against an army of scrolls in trailer for Marvel's Secret Invasion. Yes, and my uh, trailer reaction is up on the channel right now. So, by all means, go check that out. Um, I like the trailer. My initial impressions are that I dug this trailer. So, let's just pull it up and take a look. Oh, and there she is. Uh, Amelia Clark is in this, and uh, I really like her work. So, uh, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan here. So, uh, I'll tell you, my initial impression right up off the bat is that I like the tone. The tone of this trailer pops. Uh, well, it looks like it's taking a lot more of a serious tone than that kind of... Uh, schlocky slapstick humor kind of thing that the MCU has been kind of bogged down with for the last couple of installments of movies and TV shows, actually, to tell you the truth. I know that that will be controversial for a lot of people for me to say, but hey, I got to call it as it is the way that I see it. Uh, but this looks like it's a different tone. It's, it looks like it's a lot more serious, a lot more grounded, um, because we're following... Nick Fury here, Samuel L. Jackson, a trusted actor. You know that uh, he'll be able to translate any material that he's been given. Now, Ben Mendelsohn is going to be one of the scrolls, right? He's the main scroll contact for him uh, that we learned. He was in Captain Marvel, right? Um, so, right up off the bat, it looks like it's a more of a an espionage thriller kind of thing right uh, uh, out of the gate, and I dig it, man. Colonel Nicholas J. Fury. So he's officially dead, right? Uh, greater love hath no man than this. Uh, that a man lay down his use for his friends. What? Colonel Nicholas J. Fury. Wait, isn't that's not what his tombstone said, right? Didn't his tombstone say something about like Ezekiel from like uh, Pulp Fiction? Did they retcon that a little bit? Am I, am I not reading that right? Um, maybe I need to rewatch the trailer, but yeah, there they are, Ben Mendelsohn, uh, Mendelsohn, Mendelsohn, right? Uh, oh, what's going on here? Are they cloning them, or is this them asleep? It looks like they're cloning a whole bunch of people here, a bunch of people in uh, sleep pods. So yeah, Olivia Coleman's going to be in this cast. Looks like it's going to be fairly good. June twenty first, guys, is when this comes out, and we uh, this caught my eye enough that. Uh, we will be doing full live watch-alongs for this series because it just looks good. Uh, like, hands down. Uh, it looks like it's uh, going to be taking the MCU to that next level. And uh, having Amelia Clark in it certainly doesn't uh, hurt its chances. Um, yeah, just a quick little trailer, just under two minutes. Um, I implore you to go over and check out my trailer reaction. Uh, let's go down and take a look at the comments here. This is what the MCU needs. The tone is serious and consistent throughout every trailer. Okay, good. Yeah. Finally, uh, <laughs> more of the tone of Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, for sure. Uh, I think that'll be, uh, yeah. Uh, that's the the sentiment that I echoed, right? Amelia Clark, I love the vibe, seriousness, and all spy action. Not everything has to be jokes and punchlines. Exactly. And hey, I, I didn't read these comments before I started this, guys. I had no idea that that's what this uh, consensus was going to be, that the MCU has just become like this. Uh, well, actually, let's just say it. Um, kind of like a clown show um, with its consistent you know, kind of like, oh, let's make fun of this. Oh, Thor gets his clothes all ripped off. Oh, isn't this fun? It's got a bunch of screaming goats. So uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, it's, it's just like, well, what the heck's going on here, guys? Uh, yeah, um, it's hard not to feel that. But you don't get in, you don't get that from this trailer from Secret Invasion. So that's cool. Oh, yeah, Rhodey is in this too, right? Uh, War Machine, uh, you're the most wanted man on the planet. Kind of sent chill down my spine. Yeah. 
Uh, love the dark tone. Yeah, so people are really liking this. Also, Amelia Clark is in it. This is going to be fantastic. Definitely uh, what the MCU needs. Olivia Clark, she's triumphed over so many adversity uh, things in her life, like her, with her health and stuff like that. So cool to see her out working. I appreciate the care the writers have with the story. There's no unnecessary content added for needless humor. It's just pure sincerity. Well, that's from the trailer. Um, the actual show remains to be seen, but uh, we'll, we'll check this out um, for sure. Um, guys, if you had the chance to go out and uh, see this trailer, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments below. Now, uh, it's going to be a big week for trailers, a huge week for trailers. Uh, Chris Schober says, did you check out the Extraction 2 trailer just dropped on YouTube? I thought it was a pretty interesting trailer. Uh, yes, I did I did watch it. It was a really good trailer. Um, we'll talk about it in our hit or miss segments there um, because it just literally dropped like 20 minutes ago before I started the show. I didn't have time to react to it, uh, but I did watch it. Uh, I don't think people will be looking for a, an Extraction 2 trailer reaction. But uh, yeah, Pfeiffer into Hobbit there says, hey, in the live chat. Hey, how's it going? So what are other trailers dropping this week? Well, I think Blue Beetle may be dropping later on today. When that drops, um, hey, I'll do a trailer reaction for that one because people will be doing that. Um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse trailer 2 is coming this week as well. And um, Barbie. There's going to be a new Barbie trailer this week with a bunch of posters and stuff. So we'll be doing that. In fact, this is a good time for telling you guys, uh, go over to the weekly schedule. Let's talk about that right now. On the community tab, you can see our schedule for this week. Um, it's a bit of an abbreviated week because it's uh, it's a long weekend coming up. It's Good Friday, Easter, right? So uh, yeah, tomorrow we'll do a catch-up day. We'll watch the menu. It's been on queue for a while. Let's just get that out of the way and watch the menu tomorrow morning. Wednesday is our fran franchise movie day. It's Star Wars day. Uh, we'll be watching Attack of the Clones at 9.40 in the morning. And then it's Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 6 in the afternoon. Thursday, you'll have my Mario review because I'm going to see Mario on Wednesday afternoon. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking all Mario Thursday and Survivor is on Thursday. You know, Friday and Saturday, I just got to give you guys a caveat here is that um, because it's a long weekend, I'll be doing family stuff. Uh, it's all up in the air as to exactly what's going to happen. So I kind of have to leave that as a flex day. I will still be putting out content those days. I just, I can't commit to exactly what, how much time I'm going to be allowed to because uh, if I'm cooking a family dinner like a ham, <laughs> uh, I'll need to tend that because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a cook. So, uh, you know, I like to mind those things carefully. Okay. Um, with that being said, there are all my other social media handles that you can follow. Uh, go check those out. Uh, sometimes, you know, hey, those ranked videos that I post and stuff like that, you can see extended versions of those on TikTok and Instagram where I don't have that one minute time frame that YouTube has. Uh, hopefully YouTube gets rid of that. Because, you know... My ranking video was only like an, a minute and 20 seconds, and that should still qualify as a short. They should extend it to 90 seconds, like what uh, Facebook Reels has, right? Now extend it to 90 seconds for shorts on YouTube, and then everything will be really cool across the board, right? Anyway, people have really enjoyed that. So, yeah, and we're slowly coming down to... Uh, well, quarter of the way through, right? No, almost uh, at the end of April here for the year. Anyway, it's Monday, so it's time to talk about the weekend's box office report. Let's talk about uh, the numbers that have come in. China's box office anime, Suzume, dominates as Dungeons & Dragons and 65 flop in the Chinese market. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons only made $5 million in the international market, and six Sony uh, 65 only made 600,000. Oh, that's not good. But Suzumi, we saw this, uh, what was it, a week ago? That Suzumi is an anime film, and it was tracking to open up huge there. It hasn't opened up here yet, so we'll have to keep our eye on it. But Dungeons and Dragons uh, in China only made 5 million. In the North American box office, guys, it, it did fare a whole lot better. Um, so um, it opens to an okay 38.5 Ameri uh, numbers in American. Uh, box office and guys i had a lot of fun with this movie i really did and i i championed everybody to go out and check it out because it's just a fun ride at the movies you just have some popcorn you sit down and you relax and uh laugh because that's what chris uh pine brings he carries this movie uh quite a bit but it's like the core four of these people here in the background the four of them michelle rodriguez was, was cool um 
Justice Smith there and uh, Sophia Lillis. Um, really cool movie, Dungeons and Dragons. So let's get into the official numbers for the weekend of March 31st to the April 2nd. Weekend 13 already, wow. So the top five goes like this. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves was number one. Number two was John Wick Chapter 4. Number three was His Only Son. What the heck is that? Number four was Scream 6. And number five was Creed 3. Shazam! Fury of the Gods goes from the second place all the way down to the sixth spot. So not good for Shazam. We'll talk about all these numbers. And number seven, another new one, 1001. Okay. Dungeons & Dragons opening up. So we said 38.5 in the domestic. So 33 internationally. Five of that was in the China box office for a worldwide total of 71.5 for an opening weekend. And um, I don't know if that's going to be good or not, guys. Uh, it sucks, actually. Uh, some people will try to spin it as being a good one. But I heard that the production budget for this was like around $150 million for Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, which is a little bit high, which means it's going to have a tough time here to crawl back to, uh, well, breaking even because uh, 38.5 and that's going to get chopped in half this weekend when uh, Jack, Bla uh, you know, yeah, Jack Black and uh, Bowser open up against it. Um, yeah, Jack Black and uh, Super Mario opens up. So um, they've been doing the press tour for that and uh, that opens up on Wednesday, guys. So the box office run for Dungeons and Dragons is going to be a little bit shorter but I'm hoping, because I looked at the April's releases, I don't see a whole lot of other big things opening up, like huge box office things opening up in April. So, you know, people will go out and see Super Mario this weekend. It'll be like the number one movie. But then, like, the other thing up there is, like, word of mouth. And Dungeons and & Dragons uh, has really good word of mouth. And uh, it's um, done well with people... Uh, and critics alike, so it's hanging up there in the nine in the nineties, guys. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just a fun overall movie that. Yeah, you just go in and you just laugh. You just have a fun time. You forget where you are and just escape into the movie. We've we've talked about that at length, right? Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I know that people like would like to have a sequel, uh, Dungeons and Dragons two, but if it barely crosses the break even point. Um, I don't know if it can, man. Uh, I, which is a real bummer, because it 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 does it is a property that can continue on. Um, there's definitely more there to talk about with the evil wizards and stuff like that. Uh, so um, people will have that speculation, and uh, I really liked her as a as a villain. I thought she was awesome. So keep our fingers crossed that you know, hopefully you'll have some staying power. Just like uh, Scream 6 and Creed 3 have hung in there over the weeks. Like Shazam has fallen underneath of them, right? Uh, so we had to be mindful of that. Uh, what's next there? John Wick Chapter 4, second week. Uh, what was the second week drop for uh, John Wick? The uh, second week drop was 61%. And that's about average, 28.2. Uh, it had a big, big opening weekend, so... John Wick Chapter 4 was my favorite movie of April, if you watched my ranking video. So there it is, 122.8, uh, 122 international for 244.8 worldwide. Now that budget wasn't going to be $150 million. It's, it's a lower budget, so it's it's already across the, the mark. And um, with box office numbers like this, uh, John Wick Chapter 5, we talked about it last week. It's going to be on the table. I just don't know if I want them to do it. It's just one of those things, hey, you've got a perfect perfect conclusion there and you really need to go into it there's other ways you can still do movies in the john wick universe like with ballerina where john wick will show up there's ways to still have stories with john wick in it but as far as his main franchise i would like it if they were finished but money talks as i said and uh john wick chapter four if it continues to have numbers like that is going to uh, be in there for sure okay so his only son comes in the third spot 5.5 million. It's a uh, religious movie there, Bifer says. Faith-based movies gaining steam in the box office. Yeah, faith-based. After being called by on by his Lord, Abraham's faith is tested on his three-day journey to sacrifice his son. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, the Bible. Uh, isn't that a fun, uh, charming story to tell? Um, <laughs> okay, 5.5. <laughs> hey, it gets all the religious people out there. Um, 
Yeah, who wants to watch Abraham sacrifice his son? Third spot. That'll drop off significantly next week. Uh, those movies don't have a whole lot of staying power. They, they have their audience. It gets around. Scream 6, 3 to 4, 5.3. That's good for that. Uh, we don't need to look at that. Creed 3 still hanging in there. But let's talk about this uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods quickly. Um, dropping from second space place all the way down to the third, 4.6. Shazam, um, yeah, not good. Not good. Uh, 11, uh, 119 uh, for a $200 million budget. Yeah. Ooh, oh, is that what it was? Sweet, sweet, sweet mercy. Uh, Shazam 2 budget. Uh, uh, seriously? Two hundred million for Shazam. Like that, that can't be right. One hundred twenty-five. Okay, one hundred twenty-five. Yeah. Um, oh, it's gonna. It'll cross the break-even point barely. But um, and on top of what the theaters take and marketing costs, it's not gonna break even. So, um, yeah, not looking good. We'll talk about. Uh, We'll talk about the Shazam uh, fallout here in just a second. I just want to quickly look at one more thing before we close this off, and that's a thousand to one. Uh, oh, and Malum opened up. Cool. Oh, well, yeah. Well, and then he's mad. Uh, actually, we'll finish off the box office here. A thousand uh, and one. Um, yeah, one point eight. Uh, that was a lower budget one, right? After an unapologetic, unapologetic and fiercely loyal Inez kidnaps her son Terry from foster care system. Mother and son set out to reclaim their sense of home identity and stability. Okay, so it's a mother that kidnaps her son out of the foster home. Uh, I saw the trailers for it. I want to see it. It's only playing in one theater. I don't know. Uh, Malum is the one that I really want to see. And he's man we looked at uh, the trailers and stuff for on the weekend on their horror weekly roundup. But Malum is a horror movie that is a little bit lower budget, 221,000. Uh, limited theaters, too. It's only 249 theaters. So it's not that much, but people... Uh, it, it's the horror fan community we went out to see it. I want to see it because it's got um, Clark Wolf in it. So uh, <laughs> I want to see what she can do. Uh, I, hear, I hear good things about Malum. Uh, indeed. So, uh, guys, that's the weekend's box office report. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below and we will talk about it. Let's just go back down that road quickly here for... Uh, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, because it, it it's worth looking at, um, um, talking about its fall off there. $125 million, um, is its budget, and yeah, it's, it's going to be a bomb, um, which sucks, because I didn't hate it, but I it, like, it was kind of like, meh. And I uh, Zachary Levi has come out and doubled down on it, saying that it's just misunderstood, it's better than the first film and stuff like that, but... We, we have to take a look at it in context here, right? Um, what does it mean for uh, the DCU going forward? Like, uh, I know I'm, I'm still excited for the Flash movie. Blue Beetle, I'm just kind of like, meh. Uh, the trailer drops and it'll, it'll peak people's excitement levels for sure, Blue Beetle. But it's kind of like Blue Beetle and Aquaman and Flash are still in that old regime where we, we don't know where it lands. We don't know what's going to happen. So I think that had a big impact on what Shazam Fury of the Gods did at the box office. Uh, it should have come out at Christmas. That's the way I felt. It sh they delayed it. It should it was going to be out at Christmas. I know it would have been buried by Avatar, but it would have given other people the, the opportunity to watch like this feel-good movie, which is was Shazam. Um, anyway, too. Um, so what does it mean? Let's take a look at this article. They got eight points up. See if we agree with them. Shazam 3 is now very unlikely. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, Zachary Levi could return as Shazam in like uh, a Crisis of Infinite Earths storyline that may happen years down the line. Uh, but that's it. There's not going to be no, there's not going to be a Shazam 3. I agree with that. Shazam may not join the Justice Society after all. Yeah, there was that post credit scene. Uh, don't yeah there's nothing nothing's going to come of that um which is kind of a bummer and then the follow with what the rock did by cutting out a, a hawkman and was it noah centennial was supposed to come and recruit him that that sucks man um and i'm going to talk about that in just a few seconds uh might be a long time before we see shazam again yeah that'll be the follow too because they just they, they missed the mark they need to make 
Shazam 1, 2, and 3 back to back pretty much so that you can capitalize on the youth of the actors playing the young teens. Because you have to knock those out quick because they just grow up. And you have to sit down, write all the stories out together um, and set it for a lower budget, smaller, concise story about character and its development and stuff like that. And uh, that's the only way I see a Shazam movie working. The Justice Society may also not have a future in the DC universe. Yeah, they won't either because uh, Black Adam's done, which kind of sucks because I like Cyclone and I really liked Alice Hodge as Hawkman. That's a real bummer. And then, of course, you know, Black Adam and Shazam fight is now virtually impossible, which is what something that they hinted at. And this should come as a huge warning. Um, I'm going to make a short about this. Black Adam versus Shazam fight, now virtually impossible. This is my warning to you, uh, writers and filmmakers of, of these movies. Don't hold back. Shazam versus uh, Black Adam should have been your first movie out of the gate for either of them. That should have been your big, holy crap. This is the spectacle that people want to see. Don't hold it back. Because if you do, this could be your fate. That you will not succeed at the box office. And we've had two movies with Shazam and he hasn't even heard a whisper of Black Adam. That should not happen. It should not happen. Uh, shame on you. Um, and we heard that reports that Dwayne Johnson was saying that, you know, he, he felt like Black Adam should have his own movie first to establish him as a character. Okay, fine. Um, that didn't work, uh, especially when you looked at the script of what Black Adam was. It was kind of like, Black Adam's supposed to be a bad guy. He's a bad guy. He's not supposed to be a teen, uh, sympathetic to a teen. And um, it, it's just, no. Um, and I know people say, well, look at what they did with uh, Batman Begins. But the thing is, that, oh, that was Christopher Nolan. Um, that was a talented director helming that project. And holding the Joker back. And it's kind of like, they say, well, it worked before. Why couldn't it work again? Well, because it's a lesser known, like Shazam is a lesser known. He's second tier hero. Uh, Black Adam, second tier villain. Um, you got to lead off with your strongest foot first when you're dealing with these characters, right? And um, yeah, that's not going to happen now because you held back. And that should have been your first, first thing right out of the gate to establish them both is them fighting. Um, that's exactly what should have happened. I know a lot of people won't agree with me on that, uh, but that's the way I feel about it. Um, I think I'll turn that into a short. That'll be a short later on today. Um, there you go. Shazam 2's marketing and box office run is worrying Blue Beetle. Yeah, Blue Beetle, um, it'll have its market. Uh, people are fans of the actor that, are, that are, is playing Blue Beetle. Um, I don't know anything about the character in the comics. If, if, if Shazam and... Uh, Black Adam are second tier, uh, Blue Beetle's third tier, um, um, maybe even lower. I, um, I'm surprised. Like if uh, in the culture today, um, if somebody came up and said we want to make a Blue Beetle movie, it wouldn't get made. But it came in under the old regime, uh, so they should count their blessings and hopefully they they don't make the same mistake. Lead off with the strongest villain, show us the magic that Blue Beetle is. Uh, the Flash movie's box office success is now more important than ever. Not really, because we know it's going to close off the Snyderverse. We know that. Um, it's going to set up, hopefully, Supergirl, which I want, which from the trailers look cool. And it's going to be kind of like um, Michael Keaton's uh, swan song for uh, Batman, which is going to be uh, cool to see. Uh, box office, I don't know about that. The, it, see, the box office means more will mean more to the studio than us as fans fans of it will will be like okay yeah fine it was cool uh, do we need a third or a second flash movie i don't know uh, but it means more to the studio and i'll say it like this to you guys because let's say uh flash let's say it makes a billion dollars is the studio going to say no to whatever like this, like james gunn will have to acknowledge that it made a billion dollars and he'll say well if it made a billion dollars, do you think a Flash 2 would make, it'll make more money too, right? It'll make about around the same mark, right? It should, right? And why would we say no to that? Uh, your plans will have to alter to adjust for it. That's what I mean, that 
the box office numbers will have an impact on the studio. That's what I mean. They'll have to consider sequels and stuff like that. Viper says Shazam was okay. I didn't like the villains. I actually, I kind of liked the villains in the second movie. Uh, Mark Strong in the first one was kind of like, meh. But I kind of liked the, the angle of the gods having their powers taken away and stuff like that and reclaiming their thrones and stuff. I liked that angle. Uh, I think it lacked in execution. Viper also says Shazam was missing a fight from Black, a huge fight with Black Adam. Imagine Black Adam called Shazam a jabron. Yeah, exactly. Um, they just, they, they missed the opportunity. Um, you can't sit on your hands when you got the best big thing going for you. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so the first one is DC uh, Guns. DC Universe needs to prove smaller names can still work on the big screen. Well, the, that's the thing, too. Um, he, Gun wants to use all these other characters that are... If I said that Blue Beetle was third tier, Gun wants to use, like, fourth tier. <laughs> like, people we've never even... Like, who the heck are these people? Uh, yeah. And that's the danger that James Gunn is going down. Because while I like the Suicide Squad, and that's probably second-tier villains. Um, yeah, that is second-tier villains. He wants to use third-tier people that are kind of like way niche. So that so automatically, I would say, use smaller budget for these things. Establish your universe and don't hold back. So those are some of the things that we can learn from the Shazam 2 Fallout. Just a fun, well, not fun, but I thought it was worth a look. Definitely for sure. Uh, definitely worth looking at. Okay. Opening up this week, we're, since we're talking about box office numbers and stuff, we did allude that uh, Super Mario opens up this week in Chris Pratt promises Super Mario Bros. won't ruin childhoods. Okay, well, that's what people were worried about. They were they were worried about his voice. and He doesn't sound like Mario. He doesn't talk like in that high-pitched stuff, but mostly the the can the can the campaign of people out there the hate uh wagon uh that people uh, uh a bunch of channels out there have been capitalizing on tried to circle their their hate wagons around it and to to try to boycott it and say that um, it didn't work um people liked what they saw rainbow road it looks like it had a lot of fun and uh, it it's starting to uh get good early buzz now um the tomato meter hasn't been updated. It opens up on Wednesday, guys. So I'll be seeing Super Mario Bros. on Wednesday at 3.30 p.m., I believe, is my showtime. Um, so I'll be seeing it then, and I'll report in with how I uh, think it's good or not, <laughs> or terrible. Who knows? Uh, but, um, yeah, Chris Pratt said in an interview, oh, God, that's a lengthy quote. Uh, it makes sense. I was pretty nervous when they offered it to me. I thought, wow, let's not screw this up. Uh, that's where it all comes from. I think people are passionate about this character and they've probably seen uh, some of their favorite IP getting screwed up. Uh, isn't that an understatement? Yeah, it's kind of uh, a cynical business. So uh, he goes on to say more, talking about Bill and Lord uh, made this incredible movie just because, uh, where's the part where he says, um, just because something has reach doesn't mean it's going to be a good movie. There's instances of people making bad movies and ruining people's childhoods. So the pressure was on to do, uh, not to do that. And thankfully we didn't. I think the movie is fantastic. And I think your childhood is firmly intact. Um, yeah. And the, the hate bandwagon circled twice because of the voice, first of all, um, and there's a bunch of channels out there, movie news channels and movie pundits that attacked it because of that. And then there's the, the real crass bigots out there um, that make hate videos that Princess Peach is entitled. And how dare you say that she's... It's like, get out of here with that nonsense, you stupid bigot. I don't know. Sorry. I get really passionate when I see... And people circle those hate bandwagons around topics like this and inject political views. And they say, how dare you inject a political view? They're not. You are. Get out of here with that nonsense. You're not going to find that BS here on this channel. Anyway, um, I'm getting sidetracked here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, I put that all aside. I thought the trailers looked great. I'm going to have fun with it. I'm probably going to see it twice. I'm going to see it on Wednesday with... Uh, well, the the diehard fans uh, so I can report in and put in my reviews and stuff. But then I'm probably going to go see it on the weekend with my niece and stuff. And hopefully, hopefully it resonates. 
Uh, hopefully it resonates. And Jack Black. Jack Black came out as Bowser uh, for the premiere. We saw that he had like things on the back of his uh, jacket and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> he took a he took the opportunity to take a shot at Elon Musk and Twitter. Uh, Bowser, uh, Jack Black as Bowser, I think was perfect casting. I want to see some of the late night stuff with him on uh, talking about and stuff too. So they'll be doing that. Uh, I'll be taking a look at that. Uh, yeah, I guess this week... Uh, on Twitter, the blue check mark eight dollar thing happens where if you don't have it and you're not paying for it, you're going to get purged from it. Um, Zach uh, uh, Jack Black there said that man, he's I don't know, I don't think he's going to pay for it. Whatever he said, he said something cool about it. He 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 put it in a spin on it that I don't know if uh, was going to be the intended result. But when you think about it, what makes the blue check mark cool? What, that it says that you're verified? Well, what makes that cool is that the p cool people, the influencers like Jack Black, have one. So if Jack Black doesn't have one, then it would be cool not to have a check mark. So uh, what Jack Black says, uh, I don't know if I'm going to pay for it. Yeah, I'm a little embarrassed by the blue check, to be honest with you. Maybe it's cooler not to have checks. It's definitely not to... Cool. It's definitely not cool to pay for it. Yeah, and people say, "Well, you're a bill you're a millionaire. Shouldn't eight dollars a month shouldn't be anything to you?" But it's kind of like it's the principle behind it. It's definitely cool not to pay for it. I'm not going to see what happens if I don't pay for it. I'm going to call his bluff, see if he really takes my check away. Uh, I, I still think he's going to have people checked. It, it's a, it's a ridiculous thing. Elon Musk doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Um, and I know that there's people out there that are kind of like. But he's a billionaire. He's so smart. But uh, whatever. Uh, again, that's that avenue of nonsense that I don't like to go down. Um, Chris Schober uh, says, I'm hyped for Equalizer 3. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, Chris Schober says, do you think they will make Super Mario Bros. 2 movie sequel? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And uh, it's tracking well. Um, it's animated. And there's lots of stuff you could do with Mario for sure. Pfeiffer says, badges we don't need. No sticking badges. Yeah. Um, yeah. Badges. Well, eventually, if, if for some reason the YouTube channel blows up, we'll have to make uh, memberships and people will have badges and stuff like that. But right now, we're still, we're, we're, we're coming up to the 3,500 uh, subscriber mark. And um, yeah, we're on our way, guys. We're, we're, we're coming up there pretty soon. Like 75. 75 subscribers we should be there hopefully by the end of april and then one day yeah yeah like one day we'll just wake up it'll be like four thousand, and then after that like for some reason the youtube algorithm just doesn't push out this stuff uh all like i should be on the sidebars of everybody that watches all the other movie channels and, and for some reason it just doesn't happen and we because we're consistent we've been doing this for months and months and months and it should be up showing up on people's sidebars and youtube this doesn't seem maybe I'm under the wrong category. Maybe I'm not I shouldn't be under entertainment. Maybe I should be under news. Uh, but we do other entertainment stuff. <sighs> I'm digressing. Um okay, what else is opening up this week? Um aside from the Super Mario, that's gonna be a huge hit. Air. Air is opening up this week. And people are not gonna like this for me either. So this is gonna be a short as well. Hey, I gotta call it, I gotta tell you guys on my feelings behind this, honestly. Air returns Ben Affleck to his career peak Ron Tomato score. Uh, but the thing here is with Air, guys, I'm going to be brutally honest. Air feels like it's going to be homework. Um, and it's rare. It happens. It's going to be like, I love movies. I love to go to the theater to watch movies. But Air, the trailers did nothing for me. Uh, it's a Michael Jordan movie about Michael Jordan, but it doesn't have Michael Jordan in it whatsoever. Not even a cameo. It's about people making shoes, the shoes, and them, who a rich guy getting richer. Um, for me, it's kind of like between that and Super Mario. I'm gonna see Super Mario every single day of the week. I just I don't care that it's got good reviews. Um, I don't care that people tell me that it's got good acting. I don't care that people say that it's got good directing. I'll watch it. I don't want to watch it. As I said, it feels like homework. Um, and I, it, it happens. That's the, 
I, I'm not excited for it. Uh, I know that'll be like, but James, you love movies. You like Ben Affleck. I do like Ben Affleck as a director, but the story itself, I'm just not that interested in it. I don't care if uh, everybody says that it's going to be award worthy or anything like that. Um, it's just subject matter. A Michael Jordan movie without Michael Jordan. Uh, I'm just kind of like, mm, uh, uh, man, I don't, I, I, I'm sorry. An engaging and entertaining trip down memory lane and behind the scenes story that turns seemingly minor movement moment in sport. Minor moment. Michael Jordan is not minor. See, again, uh, they, they, they went in and said that uh, nobody knew that Michael Jordan would be one of the best players of all. Uh, it's like, what? No. If you know anything about sports, you know that scouts were on to people. They know scouting. Scouting, like, seriously. Seriously. Um, and about the shoe. It's kind of like, I could, I, I, and I'm, hey, guys, I'll, I'll, I'll say this too. I could go and watch this movie and I can come out and say that it's good. it was one of the better movies of the year. I, I And you've seen that last year. It happened a couple times where I was like, I don't want to watch Amsterdam. I don't want to watch, uh, you know, something that looks like it's going to be pretentious. But I came out of Amsterdam saying, wow, it's not that bad. So who knows? Maybe I'll be like, I don't want to really see air. But then I'll come out and be like, wow. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. It was good. <laughs> it's, it's a bummer thing. And guys, uh, let's be brutally honest here. Uh, regardless of how good it is, what the scores are, um, it's going to get buried by... Uh, by super mario super mario is going to trounce it it's going to pounce on it it's going to hit it with fireballs and uh as far as the weekend's box office for next week um super mario will be number one and then air i think will i think air will crack the crack the top five for sure it'll make more than five million but um i don't see it like let's say john wick drops down to 17 15 million can air beat that I don't think so. I think Air is going to make around seven, five to seven million. I think Air is going to make five to seven million. Uh, if uh, if that, I think Air will make around two point five. And here's the thing too. Not all movies are cinematic experiences. Air doesn't scream like something that I need to go pay twelve dollars in the theater to go see. I would rather wait to see this on a streaming service. I'm sorry, Ben. You, you you pick these projects. This is what you wanted to do. The thing is, is that uh, you got a plus thing there that it was only thirty five million dollars. So uh, maybe it'll make its mark. Um, but I don't expect much of air that accumulate. Hey, maybe I'll prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Um, it's an under underdog story of somebody saying that Michael Jordan wasn't going to be a big star, and they got proved wrong because he was a big star. That's like. Okay, well, prove me wrong that this movie wasn't going to do bad, was going to do bad, and prove me wrong that it was going to, that it, you know, was going to be a success. It's not going to be a $100 million movie, but it will could be maybe a $50 million movie. With a $35 million budget, does that make it a, a success? Not really. So, I'm ragging on there, guys. It's just a little pet peeve of mine. Um, and it's, it's just one of those things where, James, you've, you call yourself a critic, but you don't want to go see air. What's wrong with you? It's like, well, guys, you know, I have my own tastes and stuff like, you know, interests and that it just, it doesn't interest me. I would rather, I would love, like, I, 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 let, let's be honest here too. Um, as, as small as Malum is, um, guys, I would drive to another city to watch Malum. Uh, a lower budget horror movie made for like, hundred thousand dollars or something <laughs> uh, a, a smaller budget movie with like lower named actors really trying to do their work uh horror movie i'd rather drive to i would drive 100 kilometers to go see Malum. i don't even want to walk five minutes over to the theater to watch air that should tell you something right at least my tastes I'm ragging on here. <laughs> and I know that I'm probably turning a lot of people off with my little bit of disdain. But I just, you know, I'm not immune to these types of things. Um, just like everybody. There's certain movies out there that just don't catch people's eyes, for sure. Uh, and that's one of them. 
we'll have to see. We'll have to see how the week goes. Um, Arglass says, uh, dude, you're next level entertaining, but if news got more traction or reactor, then flip the script. Yeah. Um, Arglass says, it's very refreshing to watch a reality-based movie now and again. I'm up for watching here because of the 80s setting and the cast. Uh, though you are absolutely right. Quite often their theater isn't the best place to watch a dialogue-based movie. Yeah. Um, it's just my opinion. Hey, if, uh, if you're excited to go watch air, by all means, uh, have at it, Haas. As I said, prove me wrong. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sitting here rooting for air to fail. I just have no interest in watching. It. <laughs> That's what you need to know. And I'm going to talk about. I'll, I'll mention that in my short. The short that'll come out later today. Um, it'll be like a 20, 30 second short of me talking about films that feel like homework. Let me know what you've, what are some movies that have come out recently that felt like, a, have felt like homework for you, where it's kind of like, I don't really want to watch it, but I'll watch it because I know people will talk about it kind of thing. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Bo is not afraid. Uh, that one I hope is not going to be homework. Uh, Ari Aster, who did Hereditary, is working with Joaquin Phoenix, uh, one of the most talented actors working today in Hollywood. Uh I guess Joaquin Phoenix unveils sometimes scary, frequently funny, deeply weird three-hour Bo is Afraid at Surprise Screen. Yeah. Um, this one, uh, people liked Hereditary. Um, Midsummer was a little bit mixed. Uh, I, uh, but Ari Aster as a director looks like he's got talent. So um, Bo, is, uh, Bo is Afraid. Did I say Bo is not afraid in, in my little thumbnail? Bo is not afraid. Sorry, Bo is afraid. <laughs> I messed up. I got a typo. Um, yeah, Bo is afraid. Yeah. So, um, hey, um, it's Joaquin Phoenix, Ari Aster. I'm curious to see it. And while I didn't think that uh, Midsummer was a home run, uh, Hereditary is like a fine wine. It's aged well. So, uh, Joaquin Phoenix working with him. Um, I can't wait for it. Who else is in this? Nathan Lane and Amy Ryan. Stalked by a hulking vet with PTSD, menaced by a paint drinking teenage girl. Yeah, it sounds sounds like a trippy movie, man. Three hours long, though, that could be a deterrent for some people. Uh, one of my critiques of Midsummer was that it uh, was two and a half hours, and I felt like it should have been uh, it should have easily been an hour and forty minutes, and it would have been a much better film. Uh, Ari Aster has been given license here to do whatever he wants with his films. And we'll have to see if that's going to come back to bite him on the on his hands, right? Like, wasn't there a three-hour, three-and-a-half-hour cut of Midsummer, the director's cut? Um, yeah, but Bo is, Bo is afraid. I'm still going to check it out um, because of the name recognition. Um, comes out later this month, right? Um, yeah, April 21st. So, uh, yeah, early buzz. Emma Stone was blunt. Are you okay, man? She asked Ari Aster after a surprise screening of his latest film. So, uh, at Brooklyn's Alamo Draft House on Saturday, I guess this was out there. And Emily, Emma Stone was there. Cool. Uh, I do like Emma Stone. Um, but yeah, that's just some early buzz for Bo is Afraid. Uh, Bifer says Tetris felt like homework. But you did like Tetris, didn't you, Bifer? Uh, somebody said that Tetris was worth watching. Again, okay, Tetris is very similar subject matter of like rights issues and stuff to Air. And I think Air should have just come out on Netflix or something like that. Um, maybe maybe that'll work better. Uh, but yeah, there are movies there sometimes that it just does feel like homework. Like I'll tell you, like Babylon was the last one for me. Babylon felt like homework. Um, I didn't want to go see it and I knew that it was going to be long um, it, uh, and um, it had some good things going for it, but it, it overall it, it fell in its execution and that Babylon was the last homework one where I felt like, well, I'll go see it anyway. Yeah. Fablemans felt a little bit like that, but I came out of Fablemans going, yeah, that was a good movie. I was kind of like, wow. Yeah. A lot of the awards movies feel like they're, they're homework movies. And that sucks. Um, there's, there's definitely a separation there between entertainment and awards-worthy films. But uh, I'm digressing. 
Keeping on with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, he's going to be in Joker 2, but we got a new image of Lady Gaga on the Joker 2 set. She visits an iconic location. Just a quick story here. Last week we saw her within what she would look like as Harley Quinn with her makeup on there. I did like those photos. Um, but Joker's stairs are taken over by Harley. So the the stairs sequence in the first movie has become some something of an iconic scene. But uh, yeah, disgusting film has a... Uh, uh, Harley there up on the stairs. So she's going to be walking up the stairs or she's probably retracing his steps, trying to get into his mind frame and stuff. I don't expect her to be dancing on them. Um, yeah. So it's just a video of her, uh, walking up the stairs, man, that's a lot of stairs. So you have to have good hamstrings and quads to get up those stairs, right? Good calf strength. <laughs> I would love to have a set of stairs like that because I, I would use it as a workout. I would use those stairs every day. I'd be up and down them just to work out the legs and keep in shape. Um, that's in New York, right? Those stairs. Uh, but yeah, there's a video of her up there. Um, cool. Yeah, knowing that that set piece will come back. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. What's next? Equalizer 3. Um, this one's going to be kind of cool. I'm looking forward to this one. I like the first Equalizer. The second one was kind of meh. Equalizer 3 synopsis finds Denzel Washington battling the mafia. Uh, because Chloe Grace Moretz was in the first one, right? And then in the second one, she wasn't there. And it was just some other person. It was just him, right, in the second one. Uh, kind of lost that magic. But this one looks like it'll be cool again because it's got Dakota Fanning coming back, right? So Denzel and Dakota working together again. Looking forward to that. Uh, so the synopsis reads, Since giving up his life as a government assassin, Robert McCall has struggled to re reconcile the horrific things he's done in the past and finds a strange solace in serving justice on behalf of the oppressed, finding himself surprisingly at home in southern Italy. Italy? What? He discovers his new friends are under the control of a local crime bosses. As events turn deadly, McCall knows what he has to do. Become his friend's protector by taking on the mafia. Okay, so it's a very simple setup, as always. But yeah, Dakota Fanning's back. Uh, Man on Fire. I need to really, I need to go back and revisit uh, Man on Fire. Because um, I, I like that one, too. Uh, but to see Dakota Fanning back with Denzel, I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so they're, they've gone over to Italy in this one. He's kind of retired over to Italy. Okay, Equalizer 3. Um, I think it's all in the can now, isn't it? Um, yeah, September 1st, 2023. Uh, September 1st this year is scheduled to be released. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's got to be all in the can. Um, like that, that means that it's done filming. Like it's principal photography. I'm sure it's got to be just on post now. Um, that's why we're getting this marketing. Which means if they're publishing a story like this, yeah, a trailer's coming soon, guys. We're going to get a trailer for this soon, which is which will be cool to watch. Um, uh, Bifer says those stairs is located in a super dangerous neighborhood. Oh, is it? Bummer. Yeah, then maybe you wouldn't want to go out there at night, right? Our glass Viking says Pedro Pascal was in the second equal. Was he? <laughs> hey, hey, again, some movies, um, you don't know that a big star is in them when you watched it the first time, but then you're like, oh, Pedro was in that movie. Okay, well, Mandalorian wasn't huge then, right? Chris Schober says, I got a date with my new girlfriend from my church, St. James Church tonight. <laughs> cool, man. Um, kudos. Uh, what's next? Paddington 3. We're, hey, we're on the sequel roll here. Paddington 3. Uh, threequel. Paddington in Peru will begin filming in July. Now, I, no, I haven't watched any of the Paddington movies, guys. Um, I hear Paddington 2 is great. So says Pedro Pascal and uh, Nicolas Cage in uh, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, if you haven't seen that. Uh, it was a gag in that movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been six years since the second film has hit, so it's it's about due. Yeah, and uh, Paddington 3 had a, had a rough start getting out of the gate. So uh, um, was it going to happen or... You know, it wasn't going to happen for a while, but it looks like it's happening this July for Pennington fans out there. Pennington in Peru. Uh, do we got a story synopsis? Not just yet, it looks like. 
Um, we assume that Ben Wishaw will be back as Pennington. Yeah. Um, last time we saw Pennington, he was having uh, tea with the late queen. Cool. Well, maybe I do need to watch Paddington too. Uh, people are saying that it's good. Uh, after 10 years of working on Paddington movies, I feel absolutely protective of the little bear, and I'm delighted that uh, they'll be back working on the big screen for the third time. Okay, so there you go. Some quotes. Not that much. Uh, don't see a release date, but if it's going to be shooting this year, I would probably expect maybe late 2024. It's not going to be a movie that requires a year and a half of post-production work. I don't think they'll postpone it to 2025. They could with this type of thing. CGI bear. Uh, Paddington in Peru. There you go, guys. Filming this July. This is a topic that I, I'm passionate about. Very passionate. Um, and this will be a short later on today, too, because... Uh, Mortal Kombat 2 isn't the most exciting possibility for the franchise. What? Well, where is Mortal Kombat 2? Guys, uh, 2021 was when the first Mortal Kombat was out, and we've heard talking, hey, they worked on the script. It's going to be better. It's going to have Johnny Cage in it. But where the heck is it? We're 2023, two years away, and, and I still haven't heard a production start date on this. It's only currently in development. But a prequel spinoff would be more exciting than bringing back the series Two best characters. Well, yeah, because you got rid of Kano. And, uh, well, could you bring back Kano? Maybe. And Cabal, right? Yeah, there was some history there between Cabal and Kano, right? Uh, so this prequel series is what they're suggesting. Uh, if you could bring those two back and have, like, because they had beefs, right? Um, and we did a full live watch along for uh, this. Uh, for this Mortal Kombat. Actually, we did both Mortal Kombats. Uh, the, the 90s version and this one. So go over and check that out on the channel, guys. Um, yeah. And uh, a spinoff. I would still want to see... I still want to see the better franchise, uh, like Mortal Kombat 2. But, uh, yeah, a Black Dragon spinoff. Um, Cabal is a very interesting character. Uh, there's so much lore with the Mortal Kombat universe. Uh, with Outworld and all the ninjas and, um, you know, the the political strife in Outworld and stuff, like the jockeying for leadership and stuff. There's so much there that you could mine from, let alone the world people, like with Kano and Cabal and stuff. There's so much there that you could mine for content. I just, I just don't know why it hasn't been, it just hasn't been plucked right for an adaptation. And it kind of sucks. So, Mortal Kombat 2, I looked over at the IMDb page. Still nothing. Director Simon McQuay is supposed to be there, but the popularity has been going up. People are talking about it. Where is it? We want this movie. Uh, Cole Young, uh, Arglass says, uh, <laughs> no Cole Young. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, you guys know my feelings about Cole Young when we watch the movie. It's kind of like, what the heck are you guys doing? I know that they were trying to appeal to the MMA fans saying, hey, we got an MMA fighter now. That's not Mortal Kombat. Um, and he defeats Goro. Like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Seriously, guys. Uh, at one moment, you are a fan of the franchise because what you did with uh, Sub-Zero and Scorpion was awesome. Uh, Hiroyuki Sonata was in there as, as a Scorpion. Really cool opening sequence. And then you just kind of like Cole Young came in and uh, took all wind out of its sails. The latest update that I saw was one of the producers updated their their Twitter profile as a new badge or link profile picture. And that's the newest thing that came out like March 10th. I haven't heard anything else, but I'm keeping my ear to the ground for Mortal Kombat 2. Where is it? Um, if they get it going this year, maybe 2024. Yeah, please. Sooner rather than later, guys. That's what I say. Spinoff films aside, as I said, there's lots of material that you could spin and uh, develop into films. I don't know why it's not. I really don't. Um, it would make a good series too, Mortal Kombat, but the budget would have to be higher. You'd have to have a lot of stunt work in it too. Where is it, man? Where is Mortal Kombat 2? I'm sitting on my hands waiting for it. Okay, let's take some more live comments here. Chris Ober says Blue Beetle just released on YouTube right now, 11 minutes ago. Okay, MK2, please know Cole Young. Yeah, um, I'm not the only ones that feel the same way about Cole Young. 
He's not a good actor either. Uh, anyway, uh, Blue Beetle. Um, so we'll take a look at that in just a few seconds. Let's go into some hit or miss because this is where we'll talk about some of the other trailers that have dropped. If it's a hit, we'll talk about it. If it's a miss, we'll move on. Uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto died over the weekend, 71 years old. Oscar winning composer. That's a bummer, man. Uh, rest in peace. He did the soundtrack for, uh, what was it Emperor? Uh, what was it, um, The Last Emperor? Yeah. Uh, 1987 score for The Last Emperor. He won the Oscar for that. Um, Merry Christmas and Mr. Lawrence with David Bowie. Uh, so he's had the career, um, 71. That's, that's young. That's on the younger side. He's up there, but it's on the younger side. And, uh, are you a fan of his music? Uh, rest in peace. All right. I don't know why it's taking so long for some of these pages to load up. Natasha Leone has a big, uh, interview up on Variety. I do like Natasha Lyonne. Um, Poker Face, that's on uh, Amazon, right? Uh, that's that uh, um, Ryan Johnson series where she plays like a detective, right? Um, I haven't watched Russian Doll on Netflix. I should key that up because uh, I do like her. And she talks about, uh, you know, just her working in the business and stuff like that. Uh, talking about beating smoking. I guess she's a smoker, 43 years old. Oh, yeah. If you watch this interview, you hear her talk. She's got that, oh, uh, you can tell that she smokes. <laughs> she's got that smoker's talk. She probably coughs a lot, too. It sucks. Uh, smoking is tough on women. Uh, it ages them up a lot. And it sucks. Um, but I did want to pull that because she did quit, which is good. It's a feel-good story, right? That she quit uh smoking um uh, where was that art excerpt she talks about it uh there's really a lot this is a long interview uh yeah it was done below but anyway she says that she quit and um not to get on her in case she goes back what i hope she's done uh i hope she's quit smoking because it is it is a bad habit it truly is uh, it's just an expensive habit. At least in Canada, it is. Uh, I'm sure you could probably buy a pack of smokes for like four bucks in the States or something. <laughs> yeah, they got weird regulations there. But curious, if you're a fan of hers, go check that out. KSI apologizes for racial slur, takes break from social media. Oh my God, KSI. Um, guys, <laughs> I have no idea who the K <laughs> KSI is. I don't even know who you are. Uh, so I guess he had a racial slur. British YouTuber rapper. So he's part of part of the family of being a YouTuber. Um, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. PSI. Uh, he used the word, what? Something PI? I don't know what that, South Asian, okay. I don't mean this maliciously, but the word... Okay, so he said something there that was uh, not uh, appropriate. So a little bit of people behaving badly. KSI, if you're a KSI fan. Uh, it was all over Variety's page, so I had to kind of take a look at it. Um, kind of a miss. Um, so, as I said at the start of the show, Extraction 2 trailer dropped earlier today, like 20 minutes before we started filming. Um, Extraction 2. Uh, I, I didn't hate the first Extraction. Uh, actually, I had I had fun with it. Chris Hemsworth um, throwing down, doing a lot of his own stunts, putting his body on the line. And this trailer uh, looks like it picks up uh, from his trauma at the end of the first movie. If you don't know, he fell off a bridge and you don't know if he survived or not. So this, tra this teaser uh, picks up right up off the bat of dealing with that as an issue. Um, the stunt work in this looks amazing. And you before you realize it you're watching one long tracking shot in this where he's uh trying to struggle he, he gets hit on the head and it's kind of like what's going on here um what's happening uh and uh then he's like yeah he's in a riot situation here so he's got to 
he's trying to shake it off, but then he's also trying to fight at the same time. And uh, it's cool. It's cool action, man. This summer. Um, yeah. Chris Hemsworth throwing down. Um, like, look at that. Like, that's impressive stuff, man. That That's really impressive. And, you know, from the first Extraction movie, he did do a lot of the stunts of himself. Like, he put his body on the line. So, Extraction 2, this summer, uh, I dig what I'm seeing uh, a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it comes from a story uh, written by Joe Russo, one of the Russo brothers. So, uh, there you go. Um, Sam Hargrave. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the uh, comments here. Chris Hemsworth may have finally found another franchise with some staying power. I'm glad for him. Yeah, um, it's smaller, smaller and contained and action driven. You know what he can deliver. Uh, I do like him in other other movies like Spiderhead, where he plays like a villain and stuff like that. I did. I, I we watched that here on the channel too. I did enjoy that. But Corbett, I love the way action movies are trending between the franchise John Wick and the Mission Impossible movies. I mean, a two minute trailer somehow makes this. Uh, look even bigger and meaner than it already did. Cannot wait to see this. Um, yeah, this man never disappoints, and he has real charisma. Nineties action. Yeah, he does. He does have good charisma and action. Uh, like he was not the problem with Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, I like him as an actor. Uh, a lot of it had to do with just the script and the writing, but. Uh, I'll check this out and we'll do a full live watch along for this june 16th rated r uh because as i said i really like the first one uh maybe we'll do like a double feature we'll do both on the same day or something yeah because as i said i really enjoyed it okay so i was just brought to my attention that the blue beetle trailer dropped um let's go over to my subscriptions and see if uh yeah it has dropped okay so is it, uh, I'm going to have to wait for this commercial to finish. And, uh, I just got to close my door. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, <laughs> my bad. Um, somebody was at the door and I needed to grab that attention. Okay, so 
Blue Beetle trailer is out. Let's just take a look, shall we? Um, ah, who cares if we get copyright claimed? Um, let's take a look. Uh, I got to turn over my, um, Here we go. Excuse me, Mr. Reyes. Mr. Reyes. Are you scraping the gum off that lounger or what? Uh, okay. Everything right now feels so out of reach. No. You always land on your feet. Remember, I know nothing about Blue Beetle. I don't know what his superpowers are. I don't know his origins. I don't know who his villains are. So, this movie will have a lot of work to do in establishing who he is. But do not open it. You went but in to get a shot. The actor is from Cobra Kai, right? Okay, I don't think it's so a burger. You haven't you'll have that fan base. What the hell is that? This is in the DC. So it'll be part I of the DCU. I think he likes me. Ooh. <laughs> okay. It's on your face. Uh oh. It's got music. Okay, so it's like alien technology. That's very close to a story element that I have in you know, my stories. It's a, it's a, it's a riff on like the anime of uh, Giver, right? Re-entry systems ready. So, as I said, I don't know what his powers are. Going well, on. it looks like it I all comes from the suit, right? So he won't have like super strength or anything. It's some kind of world destroying weapon. It's world designed to protect its host. To it you want. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. I, I I think I cut a bus in half. The scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. Susan Sarandon was the bad guy, right? It was originally going to be Sharon Stone. Susan Sarandon. Okay. Action looks like it's going to be on point. The universe has sent you a gift, and you have to figure out what you're going to do with it. Okay. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Whatever you can imagine. So a little bit like... Uh, Let's party. Nice choice. Nice. Next, whatever Blue Beetle. Whoa. It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. <laughs> Batman's a fascist. August 18th. Um, okay. What do you guys think about that? Um, George Lopez. That's who it was. Yeah, George Lopez. Okay, so he's in this. Uh, synopsis, Mexican-American teenager Jamie Reyes gains superpowers when a mysterious scarab binds to his spine and provides him with a powerful suit of blue alien armor. Oh, God, that's so close to something that I wrote in one of my movies where uh, alien technology is like that. It gives them bio armor. Oh, my God. Um, eh, it's a, it's a trope. It's a, uh, whatever. Uh, never thought I'd be say this, but I can't wait to see Blue Beetle. This sure looks like a, this sure looks like a movie. <laughs> what kind of comment is that? Awesome! Can't wait to play it. Uh, though times never last, but tough people do. Uh, this looks, no, this looks lit. Yeah, so people are digging this. Suit looks badass. Uh, yeah, the costume, uh, the suit does look cool. Um, a little bit like, um, what is it? Uh, Spider-Man's arms that come up, like the Iron Spider or uh, what uh, the Yellow Jacket had in Ant-Man, like those kinds of things. Like Again, guys, I'm sorry, I'm naive. I, I have no idea what this character does uh, or what his powers or what the suit can do, but it looks like it's a little bit like a cross between that, uh, like Iron Man tech and what Blue, or sorry, what Green Lantern can do. Uh, but this is in the DC, so yeah, that's why they use the Batman reference. Uh, and... It'll, it could have Green Lantern implications. All right, good trailer. Um, yeah, high energy trailer reaction. Do it. Well, I couldn't. I I was dealing with something at the door. I apologize. I couldn't get in the mindset. Couldn't get into the character. Anyway, 
Uh, Argos says you are going to love the Blue Beetle trailer. I heard that Blue Beetle, I never heard of Blue Beetle, but when Zolo Marudina, Marud, Maradwena was cast, I was all over it. So no clue who, so no clue what he can do. Uh, yeah, um, it looked good. I'm on board with it, guys. Uh, I think it looks good. Um, as I said, it's still going to be in that fallout of where it lands in the DCE. You, Gunn says that it's going to have implications. So, hey, it's not connected to the Snyderverse. It doesn't feel like it. So, uh, but they do mention Batman. So we'll have to see how that pans out. Good trailer. All right. Um, I am going to load up the uh, Twitterverse to see what else I missed up. because I'm a little bit late. I'm a little bit late, but we watched it. We watched the Blue Beetle trailer. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to save some of that for my... I don't know if I'm going to post. Ah, I guess maybe I sh Should I do a trailer reaction? A uh, separate one? Should I cut that out? I didn't really react over the top or anything to it, right? Um, uh, that is what it is. Josie Tota joined Barbie Ferreira, Dr. Montgomery, and Faces of Death. Okay, yeah. Um, so Faces of Death moves on. We talked about that on the Horror Weekly Roundup like two weeks ago, right? Uh, that Dr. Montgomery was doing Faces of Death remake or reboot. Fatal Attraction, Lizzie Kaplan and Joshua Jackson. The trailer has been released. Um, a series based on the movie. Fatal Attraction with uh, Michael Douglas and Glenn Close, right? She's playing like the Glenn Close character where she falls in love with him and like becomes obsessed with him and does crazy things. Uh, Jinx Monsoon, Doctor Who has a major role. Okay. Rachel Weiss. Yeah, we just watched the trailer for that on the weekend. Her in... Uh, Dead Ringers. So we're looking at that. Joe Vice. Samara Weaving. To star in a Netflix comedy, Little Sky. We like Samara Weaving. Uh, it centers on Penelope, who is determined to realize her dream of being respected on an on-air reporter, despite the fact that she may be the worst reporter of all time. <laughs> okay, well, that sounds kind of fun. Right? Comedy pilot Little Sky is, is going to be a series. Jennifer Aniston says she's obsessed with White Lotus and wants to be in the upcoming season. Did you hear it, Mike White? Uh, we just watched uh, Jennifer Aniston in uh, Murder Mystery 2 on Friday, right? Anne Hathaway. Bulgari Hotel Tokyo opening. Bulgari. Um, I'm not a big fan of Bulgari since. But I do like uh, Anne Hathaway. Um, she's one of my favorite cat women. Some might see, actually, she's probably my second favorite because she's tall. Uh, I've said that many times. Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield on the set of We Live in Time. Uh, later on this week, I'm hoping to see that movie uh, where she's with uh, uh, Morgan Freeman, that Zach Braff movie. I'm hoping to get in to see a screening of that with Florence Pugh. Uh, Extraction 2 trailer. Yeah, we talked about that. Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Harrison Ford on this Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny. Uh, there was a report, although it's not confirmed, that Phoebe Waller-Bridge was tapped to direct and write the new James Bond. I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, hey, if you come in and write it, I don't know if she can direct it. I don't know if she has any directing credits. Uh, but she's going to be in the new Indiana Jones movie this year. Uh, officially premiere at Cannes. Yeah, we knew that last week. Richard Madden and Priyanka Chopra, Citadel. Uh, didn't Priyanka just have a kid with one of the Jonas Brothers or something? Richard Madden. Ooh, I like that suit. I like the pants. Uh, 
Paddington 3. Yeah, we know about that. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse debuts tomorrow, so that'll have a new trailer out tomorrow. Look at forward to seeing that one. Crowded Room. New trailer for Blue Beetle. Yeah, Lady Gaga on the stairs of Fully Adieu. So she is going to dance on them. She is in her makeup there. She is definitely in her Harley makeup there, right? Uh, we couldn't see it because it was so far away before. Um, yeah, I dig it, man. Look how, look how dark and grim that is. Cool. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco, yeah, had a, had a girl. Matilda, okay. Yeah, she just had one. And we watched, I, I do like, I do like Kelly Cuoco. I, was, I don't watch Succession. I don't even think I will watch Succession. Um, if I watch Succession, that would feel like homework. I don't want to. I know it's a big talk of the town and stuff. What was your favorite movie of 2023 so far? Uh, Annie Taylor-Joy at Super Mario Bros. What was my favorite movie of the year so far? Uh, well, I said John Wick was my favorite of March. Um, Pale Blue Eye was January. What did I say was my favorite movie of uh, February? Um, <laughs> I published so many videos. I, 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 I myself can't remember. I'm just pulling up my uh, list here of what I've seen. Um, of course, I open up Spotify instead of my Excel file. <laughs> um, yeah, what was your favorite movie of the year? Like, John Wick has got to be up there for most people, right? Uh, and then for uh, March, I, or February, I said, was Knock at the Cabin was my, right? Knock at the Cabin. So out of the three, Pale Blue Eye, Knock at the Cabin, or John Wick Chapter 4. John Wick Chapter 4 is still probably, yeah. Probably my favorite movie of the year so far. That's what I would say. Okay. So, Annie Taylor Joy, Mario Bros. movie. She is Princess Peach, isn't she? Like, look at her. <laughs> wow. I hear good things about Furiosa, too. She came out and somebody quoted her saying that uh, Furiosa is going to be an awesome movie. And it's going to have Chris Hemsworth in it as the villain, so I can't wait for that. Uh, Lady Gaga and... Okay, so there they are. Looks like they broke out there. That's cool. I'm going to have to save that one for the archive. So that'll be a short. That'll, that's going to be a short. Uh, that'll be a short later on today. New, new images. Cool, man. All right. Guys, I'm running way over time. 18 minutes. I'm sorry about that little break there that I had to take, too. Uh, it's just... Some people at the door are talking about internet services and do I want to save money on that and stuff. Um, that's pretty much all that's dropped today anyway. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, there'll be a lot of shorts published later on today. I haven't had my breakfast yet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, oop, there goes my phone too. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and look at the schedule, what's coming up this week, and then... Uh, Join us tomorrow for the menu. And if there's more movie news tomorrow, like like we know that the Spider-Man trailer is dropping tomorrow, I'll do a trailer reaction for that. That'll be up separately and stuff like that. So come join us this week. We'll have lots of fun. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. You're watching Mirror Domains. Mm -hmm.